Hi, I'm Noah Bombard. Welcome to Eagle Tribune TV. I'm here with Dave Granlin, a nationally syndicated uh, cartoonist whose work has appeared in the Boston Globe, Boston Herald, uh, Chicago Tribune, and our own Eagle Tribune. Uh, you would have seen his work. Uh, he's been uh, drawing uh, in a political and uh, car a newspaper cartoonist now for uh, going on 50 years. Right. I did my first cartoon when I was 11 uh, in a small uh, weekly newspaper in central Massachusetts, uh, and that topic was pollution. So, so what's so it like being a cartoonist today? How has it changed from when you started doing this? <coughs> Well, of course, when I first started out, I didn't know what the right tools were, but a cartoonist has to draw for the camera. It's not like drawing for the wall uh, where something's going to see it. It has to be legible and it has to be dark and uh, drawing on paper and India ink. Well, over the years, uh, the, um, the media that I, I'm, medium that I'm using has gone from uh, pen and ink, black and white, to uh, something that is going to be used for uh, full color on online as well as in magazines because uh, we're in a color TV culture now and color internet so why not color cartoons as well but some newspapers don't haven't caught up with that just yet and and traditionally a lot of your cartoons in newspapers have appeared in black and white uh, and we don't get I mean as we can see even from this cartoon up here it has really rich colors in it um, it must be kind of rewarding as an artist uh, to have the ability to have your cartoons actually shown in color and demonstrate right. your ability to actually color them. Right. Well, you know, someone told me once that a, a cartoon doesn't have to be colored. The color is not going to enhance it and make it a better cartoon. It might make it a little more flashy, but if the message is there in black and white, then it'll hold its own. But, but granted, too, I mean, it's nicer seeing color photos in a newspaper as well as color cartoons. It, it gives them that extra... Um, glance. Let's talk about the process. What do you go through to create a cartoon from concept uh, to finished product? Well, it comes from various sources. I mean, when when, um, when my kids were small, they used to think that dad was going into the trance. It was a matter of something I can see somewhere that I can just start drawing a cartoon in my head. It could be something that someone says in a local coffee shop, or it could be, uh, I get it from the television. In the old days, it was just three networks and black and, black and white newspaper, but now 24-7 news, there's always something going on in the world. And with that, I have to find out something that's going to hold for a few days, uh, something that's not going to fizzle out on me. Um, if if uh, some big event is occurring, I can, I've been in the middle of a cartoon and the event totally changes. People drop out, people back out of campaigns, people change. Um, in the case right here with, with, Ted, Ken uh, with Ted Kennedy's son, Patrick, uh, leaving the Kennedy dynasty, uh, the Kennedy's no more, this cartoon uh, if I had waited any longer, something else might have occurred. There might have been something else changing. People uh, think of it as old right. news. But uh, they here's see. a cartoon that never got to be shown in the Lawrence Eagle Tribune because uh, your, the mayor of Lawrence decided to let go of his Beacon, Beacon Hill position. Um, in, in politics, uh, this might have been ready to go. And when, when things occur like that, then you have to just... Uh, scratch that and go on to the next topic. That's an interesting point because news does change very rapidly and uh, does that happen very often where you're working on a cartoon, you're very excited about what you're doing mm -hmm. and then poof, uh, the news changes and it becomes irrelevant. Uh, how do you move on from that? Well, you have, to, you have to always be aware of that, but there's some newspapers that you send out. My cartoons appear in like 550 papers around the country. Some newspapers receive my cartoons on a Tuesday, but they might hold cartoon until the following Sunday. Well, sometimes it can go too stale. And sometimes some editors that aren't keeping up with the, with the thing haven't realized that someone has dropped out or, or, or that a team has lost like, high hopes in, in whether it be Olympics or a World Series or something. And uh, they have to make sure that the cartoon still has some relevance uh, at the moment. Now, how has your job physically changed over the years? When I, I, I worked at the company that used to work at, Community Newspaper Company, I remember you had an office. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. You had regular hours. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of newspapers now mm -hmm. uh, aren't necessarily uh, having full-time cartoonists. They're, they're freelancers. They're, they're bringing correct. in the work. Right. That's primarily what you're right. doing now. Right. Right? Some, some of the very big newspapers across the country are doing that. And they're, they're going for people that are hired guns for the, for the moment or just syndicated cartoons. When I started doing cartoons uh, full-time in the 70s, there were about uh, 250 full-time political cartoonists across the country. Some cities even had two political cartoonists or even some papers. But now I think the number is less than 80 a uh, full time. Uh, there are many uh, cartoonists like myself who still continue to draw seven to nine cartoons per week and send them out to uh, all sorts of areas. I'm, I'm doing cartoons for, for New England as well as the national audience too. So there's two, two separate uh, entities right there. Now going on 50 years, that's quite a career span. Uh, what stands out in your mind over there? Are there any particular 
uh, cartoons, uh, particular moments in, in the news and history that, uh, that really stand out in your mind? I mean, there were, there's been uh, war breaking out, there's assassinations. 9-11 was one cartoon in particular. I remember your cartoon. Uh, well, I won't really call it a cartoon because nothing was funny during that period. Yeah. Uh, comedians weren't uh, on television. There was just, people were in such a state of grieving that uh, I did a, an illustration uh, showing a, a weeping Statue of Statue Liberty. Of Liberty, Liberty yeah. Because it, I happened to be in a Dunkin' Donuts at the time when I saw it on television, on the screen in the, in the local Dunkin' Donuts. And I didn't know what was going on when I realized what was happening. And then also, too, seeing the Statue of Liberty in the foreground uh, with the billowing smoke coming out of the cities after the towers had fallen, uh, I had an image in my head. I went home and drew it. That day, I, I finished the illustration and sent it out. And um, uh, that right there, I think, was, the, the, was most, the most emotion, because I didn't know what was happening at the same time I had this image I wanted to get into press. And I think the neat thing about artwork, e even in a political cartoon or a newspaper cartoon, is it does seem to convey that emotion. I remember uh, when that was published, and we had quite a few people who were asking for copies of it, and I think the, the paper at the time actually uh, had some professional copies made up that they mm -hmm. sold uh, mm -hmm. to folks uh, who mm -hmm. really uh, saw what you had drawn and really felt it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's all, you can never really gauge the, the emotions that go along with that too. There was a, a large group of people that were writing to me. They were upset with the illustration because they say, why are you showing the Statue of Liberty cowering? Why are you showing with the head down? Why don't you put a sword in the hand of the Statue of Liberty go after the people that did it? it was, I wasn't expecting the anger to be there. I was expecting the sorrow and the grief and the shock. But for some people, they went immediately to anger and it was uh, retaliation that they wanted, and they didn't want to see that. In. So you can never really gauge what the readers are going, how they're going to react. Mm. You just put it out there and, and, and hope that they interpret what you're trying to say. Where do you see uh, cartooning going? Uh, what, what, what are the new things on the horizon? Uh, what are you looking at? Well, I'm hoping it's not going to be just a, a gag a day uh, for the, the biggest laugh. For example, uh, when uh, Sarah Palin had her famous uh, palm illustration, I mean, her words on there. Of course, I put some other things. It's, I, I can see <laughs> Russia, and it says, you betcha, in 2012. <laughs> that everyone jumped on that. And it's, uh, we, even the, uh, the White House uh, chief of, uh, uh, the, the press uh, uh, secretary uh, came out with some cheap laughter as that will. I mean, it's nice to have a, a little lull in the, in the sniping, but the, we're, we go for the, the, uh, the backbiting back and forth, the nonpartisanship out of that. And, but I, I think, by and large, a lot of cartoonists are pulling back from their viciousness, the, re the extreme cartoons, because papers just aren't going to print them, because you don't want to alienate your readers, and you don't want to offend advertisers. Right now, um, you have to be careful if you're doing a product in your cartoon. So um, now that the, the, um, the circulation is, is always on people's mind, you don't want to always do that with the news content, but uh, it, we become very PC. We have a black president now, and for some people, if I were to slightly exaggerate Barack Obama uh, in a way that might pe people might get offended. Bill Clinton, when he was in office, I, I exaggerated his weight, his bulbous nose, his little pointy top of his head, um, and his, his eating habits. But if you were to do the same, apply the same thing to a, a woman, sometimes you, it's, it's really hard. It's, a, it's always a double standard. Yeah. And how much how much time do you spend actually thinking about what people will perceive and whether or not they'll be offended by a cartoon? Well, I think that if this were a college newspaper that these cartoons were appearing in, were they a little bit more open to things? But I always have to keep in mind that this is a um, a newspaper for a, a family newspaper. It's going to be sitting on a coffee table. Youngsters are going to be seeing a newspaper. Other things. My cart some of my cartoons appear in Scholastic magazine, so I'm always aware that. There is a line that you have to stay uh, within, um, otherwise it, it goes into yeah. an, an area that you just want to, don't want to go. All right, well we look forward to seeing more of your cartoons in the pages of the Eagle Tribune and elsewhere, and we wish you a lot of luck. And uh, my guest has been uh, Dave Granlin, uh, nationally syndicated cartoonist, and thank you for joining us. Thank you.